What's up, guys? Uh, we're continuing the Vouch saga. It's very exciting, you know. Hey, why not? Some fun. It's some fun. It's some fun. <laughs> anyway, I guess Keffel's made a video defending Vosh. Um, this is honestly, if I was, if I had my back against the wall, this would be the person I'd want to uh, make a video to defend me. Of course, you know, I always love having a uh, cast full of very reputable individuals to be on my side. <laughs> No finer person than Keffels, of course. It's on her main channel, so I'm assuming that she wanted this to be really impactful. I'm not, uh, so yeah, you know, it's, it's got to be pretty powerful. Uh, maybe it'll become as powerful as the end of bread. Who knows? I don't know. Thank you so much for the gift of the membership, Sam. I appreciate it. Let's get this party started. ZM Incorporated became a member. Thank you. I don't really thank you, though. I think Sam, because Sam gave you that membership. All right, no, but thank you for the medium uh, gut. Wow, in loving memory of Tony. Wow, incredible. What a beautiful thing. I bet that this is what he wanted his legacy to be. Incredible. Am I gonna have to, what is this? Pierce became a member. Why? What, what was that? Yahoo! Hello everyone, as I'm sure Thanks again, but also, what was that? Are you all aware, this has been quite a chaotic week for me. The situation has taken up a lot more time than I would have liked it to, as I've been trying to dedicate more time to working on my new channel, Scared of- You could have just not talked about it. I don't know, that's interesting. You could have said, I, I'm i friends with Vosh and he's not a bad guy, and you could have just kind of moved on. You didn't have to. I think that, I think that you enjoy the drama. Me too, by the way. No hate, I'm just saying. Um, this is what you want to do, and if you want to stop doing it, then you have to stop doing it. It sounds very easy, I know, or simple, but that's life. Wait, while I would love to be researching and writing on spooky topics- You could have been. Completely unrelated to internet drama. Unfortunately, I got to address this one, because Ethan- Didn't you address like eight times on Twitter Crab too? Crab Ranguna became a member. Thank you so much, Crab Ranguna. Didn't you address this like a hundred times on Twitter? That's my understanding. I mean, like, you don't have to talk about it. You could just say, I like this guy. He's my friend. And then kind of just move on. You're making, you're dedicating your content to this. I don't think it's Thank as important became as a member. Saying. Hey, thank you so much. A lot of members. Stop becoming member. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for all the members. Incline and ContraPoints both put me on blast. Now there's a lot oh, of context. Oh, I'm them. waiting for ContraPoints video. In this entire situation, which I'll try to briefly summarize. But if you want the full context, watch the last video. I think if you had just said, hey, Vosh is my friend, and like I, I don't think he's a bad guy. I think a lot of this is out of context. Um, and not constantly tried to like do a bunch of weird stuff on Twitter, you probably wouldn't have had a problem. But you were constantly calling out Ethan. So like you were Samantha kind of asking for Samantha Carlson this. became a member. Thank you so much. Lots of lots of guts today. Small guts, medium guts, incredible stuff. Thank you so much. Video on my live channel, as well as the most recent VOD. I'll put the links in the description. Oh, and I'm also going to wager that this video in particular is going to see a lot of viewership outside of my own audience. Wow. So what? Why would it be outside of your own audience? This is literally on the nose for your content. If you're new here, please be patient. I like to take the time to set up my arguments before I knock them down. Following Ethan Klein's okay. first stream about Bosch, Ethan would end up bringing up both me and Tipster on his stream for criticizing his coverage of all of this. I hate to say it, but two people that we are somewhat friendly on the show, Tipster and Keffels, have have uh, sacrificed themselves mm. to Lolly Hill. Not only did <laughs> the Lolly Hill's crazy. Did Ethan imply both of us are pedophiles? He didn't. Um, he just, okay. I don't think that he really did. He said it's people that were friendly of the show. He's not really morally chastising you particularly hard here. I think that that's a bit of a reach. But any Lollies are not good. <laughs> Even if you don't think they're CP, they're not good. It's weird. <laughs> the thousands of people who were defending Bosch were also pedophiles. Oh, it was really God. gross and a completely it was so gross. irresponsible use of his platform. Ethan responded to- I don't understand why people are like- this is such a terminally online thing to me. Like, are you it's not you're not surprised that people on the internet are uncomfortable with drawn kids, and they're like, "Yo, this is gross." I don't I don't know why you guys are just don't. It's not even like a hot take. It's like a normal. You guys got to get offline and have like a regular friend. People upset over being falsely accused of being pedophiles by mocking the word pedo jacketing. Also, what the fuck is pedo jacketing? <laughs> why do you guys have such weird ass expressions for everything? And how often are you being accused of being a pedo that you need a nickname for it? Not sure if anybody has told you. 
but I thought Jardo. it was really Super cool. Chatted two dollars. Reminder that I'm also a member. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Always, of course. All of my members. Hey, Papa, I'm not sure if anyone has told you this, but I thought it was really cool. Your video is in the background of Mudahar's journalism video. It's the LTG video in his recommendation. Oh, I mean, that's kind of neat. I guess I'll... Okay. If the jacket fits, you must not acquit. Oh. <laughs> oh. Incoming trans weaponization. And then here, this is, again, <laughs> not a real photograph. Cam sent this. <laughs> And this is not real. He is not actually wearing this. But is this a pedo jacket? I don't know. But then came up with the stupidest nickname imaginable in order to call all of his detractors pedophiles. I had a little bit of a loss of innocence, and I and I mean that it sounds silly, but I'm being somewhat serious. Just to be clear, like I understand where Ethan's coming from. I was like, oh, how come this is such a an issue of people getting called pedos that you have to come up with a term about it? I mean, I again, I disagree. Like there are people who weaponize, Hello, weaponize who weaponize that um, over and over again. So I understand why that exists, but you know, yeah. Well, anyway when I say that because I did not know that there were so many people that were like CP adjacent lolly lollipops I'm calling them now mm -hmm. Vosh and the lollipop I like how it looked like he winked but it was really just a Tourette stick and also same Vosh and the lollipop <laughs> guild <laughs> so in response to everything that happened okay. I rightfully got pretty mad fired off a tweet in frustration from getting called a pedophile hundreds of times in a single day I uh, don't really think that that's what Ethan did, but okay. And thought I'd rinse my hands, move on, and go back to- I just don't understand why it's so normal to you. The, the lolly stuff is so normal to you. I don't know. <laughs> that you don't consider it even at least like close to CP. I don't get- I just don't get it. I personally don't understand it. You know? Writing scripts for spooky videos on my new channel. Ooh, Was tweeting videos. while I was angry and upset a bad idea? Probably. The sheer scope- Probably. I've never had this issue before, though. I've never tweeted when I was angry, so I could have never possibly learned my lesson on this- <laughs> Okay. The harassment has been unimaginable. I'd wow. save some of the offending comments down, but honestly... Would... They're so bad, and it's like Ethan's fault. ...be rewarding the people who do it. They would see me showing you it as some sort of trophy. Besides, because... Ethan... Isn't that what Hassan said? Don't show that stuff because it incentivizes them to do it more, and now you're listening to him after morally chastising him for that? I don't know. It seems weird. Ethan decided it was okay. All you need to do is scroll through the r slash <sighs> h3h3 production subreddit to find dozens of... No thanks, I'm not cringe. ...comments and memes calling me a pedophile. Even edgy jokes uh -huh. I have made in private in the past are now being used by the h3h3 audience with okay. Ethan's blessings, of course, to justify calling me a pedophile and dragging- I mean, what are some of the shit? Tweeting, I only have sex with girls with small breasts so I can close my eyes and pretend I'm having sex with a preteen and immediately losing 50,000 followers. I feel like I I feel like I get why people are uncomfortable with that one, though. That's a, that's weird. You don't think that that's un You don't understand why people would be uncomfortable with that? <laughs> Listen, I like edgy humor. You know, but not everybody has edgy humor. Some people are, are disgusted when they hear a joke about- children <laughs> i get it so it's like why why don't you understand i don't get it it's like kind of entitled just be like yeah i get why they're upset i wish they weren't as upset because my intentions are clearly not uh predatory but that's you could argue that and that's fun but you don't understand why they're upset with some of the stuff that you said why why that's like i don't i don't know it's so it's like so weird like you guys realize that this is so terminally online if you went to a if you went to like a fucking bank and you explained to the teller this situation they would they would call the cops on you you know what i mean like a, <laughs> like imagine explaining this to people that are normal that's what you need to do you need to be grounded in reality that's what a lot of these content creators don't have is like a grounding in reality they're all so terminally online and i get it there's not a lot to do outside i do understand it but like you guys are you guys got to get it together you know, in my reputation through the mud. I know it might be hard, what reputation. Okay, hard to believe, but the reason that I even said that in the first place oh, was God. honestly gallows humor. It felt gallows humor. What does that mean? It was a bit empowering, at least in private, to what? make edgy jokes like that. While thousands of people speculated about how terrible of a person I am, based off of no substantive evidence. In 2022, okay. When I sent this text message, I was relentlessly being called a groomer and a pedophile by conservatives. Due to my work advocating for transgender youth, the fact that false allegations of pedophilia in order to discredit me came up so frequently, journalists have actually written about it before. The situation only got worse when ContraPoints cool. decided to call me out directly on Twitter, followed by okay. blocking me despite me never publicly interacting with her throughout this controversy whatsoever. Okay, who cares? I want to choose my words carefully here and dissect how disingenuous and outright mal- here's, here's my thing. Why did all of that stuff get leaked in the first place? Like, I make I make some pretty edgy edgy jokes with my friends too. I got them in text message form, and if they were released, I would just be like, "Yeah, it's pretty rough." Uh, sorry, but my friends probably wouldn't leak it. Why are your friends leaking it? I don't understand. Like, why you got to pick better friends, girl? Like, I don't understand. Like, it's not not a good look for you to have bad friends that aren't uh, able to 
not expose you, but okay. Malicious <laughs> ContraPoints is in here. This oh, is a situation. Man. I don't really know who ContraPoints is, um, but a lot of people speak highly of her, so well, cool. We're on a surface level. This all seems fine, but she didn't know enough about the situation to even comment on it. I oh, never defended Jesus. anyone consuming sexually explicit childlike images, and yes. Isn't that what Vosh was doing? Aren't you defending him? Being dead named and misgendered alongside being called a pedophile hundreds of times in a single day is transphobic. And this starts. Uh, it could be if it's because you're trans. If it's because you're defending Vosh's uh, lollipop folder, then I could kind of understand it. I mean, I don't think that type of material is the same thing, just to be clear. But that's weird. <laughs> it's something. And Devosh himself said that he thinks it's adjacent to, you know, real stuff. So, like, why uh, take your buddy's word for it? I don't know. Or did after Ethan Klein decide to call me a pedophile? If you want a pretty clear... Do I say the N-word in my private tax? No, I don't. I don't say the N-word in my private tax. I say that in publicly at the supermarket. No, I'm just kidding. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Example of how Ethan's rhetoric has led to transphobia, Bad Empanada, a leftist YouTuber with 120k subscribers, oh, wow. said that as a collective, trans people are racist pedophiles in response to watching Ethan mock the concept of pedojacketing. I don't think that has anything to do with Ethan. And this guy seems like a loser. So, uh, what is this? What? Pedo jacket trans people. First of all, uh -oh. first of all, whoa. I didn't say anything about trans people. And the fact that you even brought that up in this conversation is really fucked. That's so fucking weird, too. Like, a lot of these people, like, I honestly just, they, they seem to like be obsessed with using trans identity to like defend the indefensible. Like, you're not, you're not attacking them because their opinions is, is, is dog shit because they're defending horrible things because they are, they are horrible people. No, no, the only possible thing is because they are trans. Oh, this guy, I, I think I agree with him. I think he's just saying that there are some trans people who will use trans identity or non-trans people as well, use trans identity to, for some reason, defend Vosh's behavior. That's true. Like, they are, honestly... Like, you're, do, do, you seem to do that. <laughs> so As a collective, they are on average pedophiles, white, racist, yet they, they like, you know... I don't think he's speaking about all trans people. If he is, I'm correct me then but it sounds like he's just speaking about the people that are using transness as a shield to defend Vosh. they're pedophiles who do racism from a position of whiteness and they defend themselves from a position of all right he's getting a little too woke now transness and this guy seems like someone that would be on your side keffels what it's fucking like, why are you I think that people need to be careful uh, about false allegations of pedophilia. And in fact, this was sure. something that Ethan Klein knew all too well. Didn't, I mean, I don't like Keemstar, but didn't you call him a pedophile for having like a 20-year-old girlfriend? I don't understand. Like, <laughs> you're not really the one to do this, right? <laughs> Neither is he. But I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't know what you mean. This is confusing. Because he rightfully put Keemstar on blast back in 2016 for falsely accusing RuneScape Twitch streamer Tony Winchester of being a pedophile. Yeah, resulting in years-long intense... <laughs> Call me Carson too, basically. Harassment. Sure. He falsely accused an elderly streamer of being a convicted yeah. pedophile. I think these are a little bit different because Vosh was caught with Ollie in his folder and then having some really obnoxious takes about CP. And I, I concede that I think that he had those obnoxious takes about CP because he was trying he was trying to be provocative for attention. Right? If I came to you and said, Hey guys, I think that we should care more about where parts of our computers come from because it uses child slavery and exploitation. Um, in a way that might be considered similar to child pornography, so we should care more and advocate against it. You'd probably sit here and go, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Or maybe you'd say you don't care, whatever. But if I sat here and said, guys, you know, basically, we should be able to jack off to CP because, well, <laughs> you use a computer and eat chocolate. Right? That was the basics of his message, and it was meant to be provocative. It was meant to be Twitter clipped. It was meant for people to go, ew, what the fuck? And then to engage with the argument. It was meant to be uh, provocative, you know? And then you collect that with the fact that he's got some horse stuff he want, he want <laughs> in his folder. It's, it's kind of hard not to go, uh, what is going on here, you know? Again, like, I, I don't know, be a normal person and realize that that's just fucking uh, weird. <laughs> it's just it's bizarre. So, oh, let me let me play the alert. Sorry, sorry, was it for a second. Luke Schwen super Whoa. chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. When you say that Boogie needs to make more content, you should say content instead of content because you're calling your cunt in disguise. Smile. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for the donation, brother. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, Luke, that was really nice. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a interesting comment. I'll keep it in mind. All right. I mean, how does he ever even live this one down? And do you know what his evidence was? Wait for it. Oh, he geez. looked like the guy in the photo. Yeah. That's it. Now, Keemstar likes to act like him and Tony are all good, but here's a clip of Tony talking about the incident one and a half years later, describing how this one mishap on Keemstar's drama alert uh, ended up with years of endless harassment for him. That's Have a listen. One time I had, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people threatening to kill my family, harassing Jesus. my sister, my nephews. Sorry. I mean, me, I mean, you know, they were just, they, they t hacked our, my RuneScape account. They hacked our YouTube channel. They did more crap than you can even possibly imagine, okay? Damn. All about how I'm a child molester and a, and a pedophile. Anyway, I, I sent a little you know, Twitter out. I, I just said, Keemstar, just so you know, your BS a year and a half ago, still causes me trouble every day it's just outright disgusting to me that ethan klein okay. is willing to call people pedophiles I just, I'm, I'm feeling like this is a totally different scenario in this scenario this guy quite literally didn't do anything at all that would even call his character into question and the other scenario vosh has a lot of stuff that calls his character into question i don't think defenses like this defend vosh i think they make him look worse i don't think that this is helpful for anybody this is like desperate this is like to me it's like uh, desperate debate bullshit it's like while well, actually Look at that, and it's like well, this is boring. What are you talking about? This is stupid. Like, like it's a it's a boring, dumb argument. Nobody's gonna, nobody would buy into this with any level of like intelligence. It's weird, you know. I mean, this is just not the way to go about it. Well, seemingly without any consideration for the ramifications of his actions, and even more disgusting that he has put others on blast for doing the same thing that he is doing now. But of course, maybe over the years he stopped caring about right or wrong. As throughout most of his recent stream, when he engaged in all of this vitriolic behavior. He made sure to let everyone know how much money he was making doing this. And I'll tell you this, Vosh and friends, I am ben I am making money right now. And I hope that bothers you. I'm going to make a... I don't know why he said it, but also I, I don't care. Ton of money right now, bro. <laughs> and you know what? I don't give a fuck. It's probably in some kind of response to them. Oh, I think because I watched the whole thing. From what I remember, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was something to do with them saying like, oh, you're only doing this for money, blah, blah, blah. And then Ethan was like, this is like one of our, like these streams are, are average for us. <laughs> like they're not even our best streams. And then he went on to like joke around about how much money he makes. I don't think it was. I don't, I don't think that's it. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. It's just so sad to see. What happened to the Ethan that was standing up for Tony Winchester? I mean, what happened to the Ethan? I mean, this is... He's dead. Who cares? Not Tony. That's terrible. I mean, that Ethan... That... <laughs> oh, that sounded bad. Rest in peace, Tony. I love you. Okay? God bless. Okay? Peace be with you. And also with you. If Kevils ever watched this, she'd call me transphobic for just for praising God and Jesus. I love God. God loves trans people, by the way. Unironically, not even sarcastic. That's why he made them that way. That's why he made trans people. So, let's keep that in mind. This is how Ethan reacted to me wanting to de-escalate this conflict. Because I genuinely care about the people that are involved in this. She says, I'll try giving him a call later to see if this can be <laughs> sorted instead of becoming online blood sports. Well, listen, that's kind of my business. Kind of based? <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a bloody business. It's kind of true. I kind of, I, I appreciate the honesty. You know, obviously, uh, the, I, you know, it's like every other day I'm agreeing or disagreeing with Ethan, you know. Uh, I appreciate the honesty. I don't talk it all the time. I'm a bitch. I'm a fucking drama. Like, listen, I do social, political conversations and stuff like that. I'm a, But I'm drama, brother. And I've embraced it. I like being a little catty. I like being a little dramatic. And I think that's okay. And I think it's good to tell you guys that because this way you know that this isn't as serious, you know, in most cases. It's not really as serious as a lot of other people are saying. We're just here gooning around, having a little, a little laugh. You know, having a little bit of fun. And I think it's a beautiful thing to let you know. Because sometimes people like to overload, like, this is the most serious thing that's ever happened. It's like, it's not. We're here for fun. You guys got off work or you're trying to get through work. You're not trying to burn out on, like, the most insanely horrible psychopath killer in the world, right? You'd be watching something else. You're here to have a little bit of fun and make fun of stupid people online. And I'm one of them. You know? Incredible stuff. <laughs> And y'all just defended animated CP, so let's get ya. Even when as far as to say that he knew he was engaging in defamation, and what? encourage Vosh to sue him. Vosh should legitimately sue Ethan for slander. <laughs> Someone says, as nice as that would be, I doubt there's enough case uh, to have a case. No, there is. I don't... <laughs> the amount of slander and false accusations are more than enough for a solid lawsuit. He's reading somebody else's comment. I said, I'm I'm begging you, please, I'll even crowdfund for you to sue me. Let's do it. I'm not being dead serious. I would be fucking over the moon if you sued me, please. This isn't him admitting that he's defaming anybody's character. He's just him 
boasting about how he would win because he doesn't believe he's defaming somebody's character. <laughs> what? Going back to ContraPoints for a moment. Contra this is rough for you. Points absolutely knows what she is doing and is being intentionally know, malicious. By lying and saying that I'm defending someone's consumption of childlike sexual images. But that is, that is exactly what you're doing, though. Okay. And calling me harmful to the trans community. Okay. She, a significantly larger creator, basically gave the signal to everyone to dismiss all of my criticisms and in fact to escalate the harassment even further. The worst part about all of this is how disproportionate it is. I only have 43,000 subscribers on my main YouTube channel and I'm getting my okay. reputation dragged through the mud by people who have tens of millions of subscribers collectively between all their platforms. What I Okay, stop, stop fucking crying about it. Okay, bigger content creators than me have covered me before too. That's life. What do you like? Don't do this content then. Stop doing this content. You literally could have sent one tweet out that says, I think the Vosh stuff is out of context. I still stand with Vosh. And you could have moved on. But you you went on a Twitter tirade about it because this is what you like to do. You like to be part of the drama and then pretend that you're really just a spooky channel. Like it's cool that you want to do that. And I think that's a great idea to get rid of, you know, take get away from some of like the the online this, you know, in general, online stuff like this can be really toxic. But like you're not doing anything to actually get away from it. So I think it's even more heinous, however, is that ContraPoints discussed in her video canceling how harmful and damaging it is when smaller creators have false allegations spread against them. Unlike larger creators like Ethan Klein, who have the money to pay for PR and can easily bounce back. I've also become very disillusioned. I don't know, I bounced back several times and I'm not a very big creator, so with the way it's just about learning from your mistakes and moving forward. The accusations are thrown around so frivolously on social media. No, no offense. Just a quick, quick question. Is ContraPoints trans? This is not, a, that's not like insulting or anything. I think it's a beautiful thing. I'm just curious. Okay. Please don't yell at me. By the way, they're used to escalate conflict instead of promote understanding. And by the way, they're sometimes weaponized to destroy people who have made mistakes, but who really don't deserve to be destroyed. Now, maybe you're thinking, destroyed? What do you mean destroyed? James is a 20 year old millionaire on his way to owning his own makeup empire. And you are completely correct. If you're James Charles, if you're a superstar, then being canceled most likely does not destroy. Oh, I think she is. Okay. Listen, that wasn't meant to be rude. Hopefully that didn't come off as rude. All right, I'm sorry. All right, I have a I have a trans dar, I have a gay dar too. I have a trans. I can tell everything. I don't know. I feel like I'm digging a worse hole. I'm so sorry for being insensitive. <laughs> okay, let's just move on. Cancelers blend into the general backdrop of haters, and haters. they can set you back a few million subscribers and a lot of emotional turmoil. But in the long run, they can't really touch your success. But here's the thing. What if you're not James Charles? Oh, what if you're a small geez. creator? Oh, what God. if you can't afford public relations help? What if okay. you belong to a marginalized community and you rely on that community for support? Well, in that case... Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. Got him. You should destroy yourself now and give somebody else a piece of that oxygen and an ozone layer that's covered up so that we can breathe inside this blue trapped bubble. I feel like throughout this entire fiasco, the things I have actually- Like Lupe fiasco? Or? ...been upset about were simply ignored. And I want to lay out my arguments, as well as address some of the accusations made against me, both by Ethan Klein and ContraPoints. What I'm upset about in this situation more than anything is Ethan presenting his audience clips from Vosh's streams that deliberately cut out very important context. I don't know, I watched the whole thing. It sounded like all the context was there. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay, I'll I'll give it a listen. For instance, this is a clip that Ethan Klein played on his show to prove that Vosh- Just to be clear, Ethan on his show first played the clip compilation, and then he played for each individual clip compilation a long form clip, like the like, like a minute on each one, I think. That's roughly accurate. So um, I have a hard time uh, but okay. She's a pedophile. Here's um, <laughs> funny part in our own chat. It's funny because people go, oh, he's taken out of context, but listen to what he says. Assistant. Yes, 100%. Listen very carefully to the exact language that I use. Listen I very carefully <laughs> as I express myself <laughs> articulately and clearly as I possibly can. If you have to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession Sister. of child pornography should be illegal. That was pretty bad, right? Here's well, he played the full clip though. Like later in the stream, he even said like I think before that or after that that this isn't they're going to play the full clips. Like they did a good job of making sure that you knew that they were playing the full clips later. What was said immediately after that clip was played, which was not shown <clears throat> on Ethan's stream. In fact, and this is going to be a real hot take. I get to hear convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child pornography should be illegal. Actual child pornography. 
How's that for a hot fucking day? Now to clarify on this take, as I feel it necessary to do so. Um, give me like a second, my wife's calling me. We do not, in this country, um, typically uh, uh, criminalize people who have procured me uh, media or resources which were the product of abuse. Um, it is not illegal to own necklaces that have um, slave diamonds or whatever, what are they called? Um, or or you yeah, blood diamonds? Yeah, all of our clothes produced by sweatshops, our computers with silicon and lithium mined from literal fucking slaves. Yeah, Ethan responded to this argument, and the argument was just that these things, that you can get necklaces without abusing somebody, you can't r get child porn without abusing a child. He knows this argument, okay. In our society, we have already deemed that people are not responsible for the mechanisms by which the media they consume and the content they uh, engage with are produced. Uh, it's a dog shit argument from Vosh, and it's intentionally trying to be provocative for attention on social media. No, 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 no. Okay. Right now. You like that argument? Ooh, you like that? You like that moral culpability? You're all worse than fucking CP owners, and I am too. Do you like that? No ethical consumption under capitalism. Shit sucks, right? But if we accept that argument for slave labor, then we definitely have to accept it for child pornography. None of it is, yeah, I agree. None of okay. it is ethical. But we already made this social decision that people are not responsible for the systems by which the stuff they own is produced. We've already made that decision. You're right, but you're kind of revealing your power level. No, this is exactly what I, this is exactly what I fucking mean. I'm right, but I'm revealing my fucking pedo power level because I'm right. No, this is a moral inconsistency in society. Uh, the answer should be that all of these things are bad. This was a common occurrence. Yeah, I don't think he showed that clip on the Ethan thing, specifically that clip. Uh, he, um, but he re he responded to that argument multiple times, so it's not like he left that argument out. I still don't think it's, uh, yeah, I don't think that's a W. Throughout all of Ethan Klein's coverage of Vosh. Here's the most heinous time that it occurred. Please, uh, please, right now, uncuck your dumb shit lib cuck fucking um, SJW cuck brains it. and recognize this empirically correct fact that I am about Once again, I'm he ready. sets it up in the clearest te terms possible. Is this the one about, like, the sexual relationship with a child and adult can be beneficial to, like, a kid or something? Is that the argument? Let's clear your ears out, everybody. Sit down and listen to every word, which I mean with my whole body and soul. Okay. Spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship wow. and for it to have positive outcomes. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one, guys. Let's see the explanation there. Maybe On the maybe show. we're wrong. Maybe all of us are dumb. Trial as well. That's game. I don't know how he survived that one. What? How, I don't know how he. Let's hear it, that. baby. Once again, absolutely oh. horrendous, right? Yeah. Absolutely no way this could be justified. Correct. Now I'll show you the full clip. I'm pretty sure Ethan even showed the full clip that was like, but in most cases it's bad. Like I think Vosh goes on to say, like, but in most cases it's it's this is I think Vosh goes on to say because I'm pretty sure Ethan played this one and I could be wrong. We'll see in a second. But Vosh went on to say, but um, it's so rare that there could be a positive outcome for the kid that they should never have it legalized. And he was basically just talking about his bullshit political ideology or philosophy or whatever dumb bullshit that he was. Uh, debating like a moron with the context from before and after uh, guys did you know trauma builds character so it's actually okay to molest kids like that's what's that there we go there's a context guy <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> after the clip was played uh, which ethan klein did not show his audience that wasn't me guys that was that was me pretending to have Vosh's argument okay shut the fuck up it's not that you guys misunderstood I, I just think that this is very dumb for you for you to misunderstand this point it's not like you guys misunderstood it's just like this is embarrassing okay look this is super duper simple okay yeah, let's hear it a utilitarianism Act utilitarianism is about considering the consequences of a specific action, okay? It is possible, please, uh, please right now, uncuck your dumb shit libcuck fucking SJW brains and okay. recognize this empirically correct fact that I am about to spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship oh, now and I for get it to it. have positive yep. outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. However, you get trauma. And a place to stay. However, categorically, we discourage those relationships because <sighs> as a rule, it is substantially more likely that enabling them would cause harm in society. Right, so I'm pretty sure Ethan played this context on the stream. I almost guarantee you that. But okay, you're right. That's the difference between act well, and rule absolutely. utilitarianism. Wow. An act utilitarian would say, oh, this is an instance where it was good for the adult and the minor to have sex. That would make it a good action. But the rule utilitarian, which is what I am, would say. Yeah, this wouldn't be so bad if he didn't have fucking Lollicon on his goddamn computer saved. <laughs> Okay. Even, uh, but this is actually still pretty. I don't know. What's the point of this conversation? Like, what is the what is what do we get out of this? Who who is drawn to this uh, to this conversation? Who's drawn to this take? Who's going? Wow, that's a really good point. I I don't I don't know. Like, I, what what is this? What how how is this serving anybody? I don't understand it. Though that individual outcome was good, the act <sighs> was still bad because, in general, 
in a broader application. Right. Most people are just hearing that there's a world where you can rape a child and it's good for them. That's what most people are going to hear. And if you don't understand that, then you're fucking stupid. It's a weird, I don't understand why you would even feel comfortable enough to have that take because it's 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 gross. Right. Um, and if that's his argument as to why, like, you know, he I don't know. I, I mean, he was like 25 when he made this take. So it's really fucking weird. Um, again, I think I'm being the most charitable. He was just trying to have hot takes for fucking Twitter attention. I, I, okay. Like, I, you know, who's, who's going to eat up that argument? You know, you guys will sit here and talk about how everything's a fucking trans dog whistle, but you don't think that that might be a, a fucking pedal dog whistle to some people. You know, this is what happens when you guys engage in like this fucking obnoxious dog whistling. Everything's a conspiracy theory argument and dog whistles exist. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying like, what do you expect people to do? <sighs> for adults and children to have sex with one another leads to horribly destructive outcomes. For that reason, it is an unethical act. So on the off chance it might help someone, we, we just allow everyone to engage in a generally destructive practice. Except that's the literal exact opposite of what... Actually, I think that I drive better drunk, so you should let me dr everybody drink and drive. I am saying. Do you have fucking brain worms? Do you have fucking brain worms? Like, are you seriously misunderstanding my um, take that is really uh, fucking gross? Again, uncomfortable take. It's weird that he has the, the enough passion to say it. I don't. I really don't get it. I don't. I don't. We, there's nothing is served here. I could have made the same argument with I, with fucking drunk driving. I could have been like, yeah, there is a world where like some people might drive better drunk, but most people don't, and it's dangerous. So you shouldn't allow that. Why specifically choose to use kids other than to be provocative for attention? Again, if you want to say that he has these tobs, he's got tobs, he's got terminally online fucking brain disorder. Um. And this was a misstep. That's fine. But like to call people stupid for not understanding this stuff is just childish. It's like, oh, why are, oh, why aren't you more comfortable with us talking about childs being assaulted? <laughs> I don't know. I, who the fuck? Who knows? Who knows, guys? Who knows, guys? Trigger warning, transgender, uh, tr trigger warning, misgendering. By the way, let's have an in-depth conversation about children being molested. <laughs> and like, why well, I don't understand. Be sensitive to me and my struggle as a trans person, but not a kid's struggle or a person's struggle that might have been molested. Fuck that shit. I don't know. It's just weird. What's the point? What's the reason? I don't I don't get it. Barry 79, I literally <sighs> made the opposite of that point. I literally just yeah, explained yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, opposite yeah. of what you just said. That no. They included this context in here. Not the full, this entire thing, but they included the context that it was about some bullshit political philosophy. On the off chance it might help someone who shouldn't categorically support one action because I am... That like, is completely non-applicable to anybody in the real world. May rule utilitarian. Another thing that really bothered me was that Ethan never showed... Not at least the, the explanation of it doesn't matter. ...any of the numerous times that Bosch has talked about how CP is bad throughout his oh, years of being on the platform you did show vosh say that lollycon having that is definitely concerning when it and cp adjacent or something along those lines and then he had it in his hard drive <laughs> so i don't feel like you're missing that part that was the first thing you needed to address the vegan gains debate that's a solid f not only did i not make my argument that's well, true drunk driving is not that big of a deal it's the drunk crashing that's the problem. You have a good point there. At one point, I made my anti-child pornography argument so poorly <sighs> that it got clipped out of context and people are using it uh, as uh, an argument that I support child pornography. My basic argument is that, like, well, why, why is child, child pornography bad? bad? Because to produce it, you have to hurt children. Because it hurts people to produce it, yeah? Producing well. child porn requires harming a child. The argument I'm making is that it frustrates me that liberals recognize child pornography is bad. Great, nice. And you shouldn't have multiple times made a provocative take for Twitter attention. Like, sorry. Well done. But then they're really, really defensive of, like, global uh, uh, commodity the production chains that involve um, child slave labor. Like, they'll talk that off, like, really, really, really uh, readily, you know? Like, oh, well, there's no other choice. Oh, well, we don't have to care about that. Oh, yeah, dude, like, cobalt that's bind up is done by child slave. But, uh, you know, like, whatever. That's just how the economy goes. Oh, uh, dude, whatever. Like, we make computers. They look sick, bro. Like, don't think about it. So that was the argument that I was making oh. originally. I, I don't know. Me personally, I would have tried to find another example. I'm yeah, it's a good. Me too. Like, hey, like, no, hey, me too. But now I'll be honest. You could have made that. Or you could have made that argument without uh, saying that there's no moral uh, reason not to like to make a CP illegal or whatever that you said, or to make the consumption illegal. You you did that again to be provocative. It's it's just stop. I'm being charitable to Bosch because I've known him for a long time. Whoa. I've seen him get slandered and lied about as a constant thing throughout oh, his geez. entire career. I don't That's think he's so lying sad. when he said he didn't know those images were lolly. For those who well, then you're dumb. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I saw them. I looked at them real, real closely. I'm just kidding. I did not look at them real closely. Um, 
No, we all saw them. It's pretty clear. And, you know, we don't know how much more fucking lolly he has in his thing. He obviously was jerking off to it. He even said himself, oh, looking back, yeah, I guess this actually does kind of look like... You knew what it was. Shut, the, shut up. Didn't watch the video linked at the beginning of this one. This is how Vosh responded when the news went viral. Another thing which Ethan conveniently did not play during his stream. They say you downloaded Lollycon? A uh, deliberately disingenuous framing. Uh, I'll, I mean... How did it get there? Did your mom do it? I'll explain the whole thing. For those who don't know, four days ago, I was doing what I do, which is showing chat men's formal wear and talking at them about it okay. hours on end. And I was gonna open up an image with right click, open a new window, but instead I did right click, save as, and it opened a folder called to be sorted. The to be sorted folder, which is where I put images that have yet to be sorted. And I had pictures of a little a good girl getting railed by a horse cock, yeah. <laughs> in case the name didn't indicate that, was the place that it went to because the Fuck. file type of the image, which was like, I don't know, JPEG or something? Oh, I don't know. Um, the last image that I saved to the to be sorted folder was an image of Marcel from Dungeon Meshi. This is not the this is not the thing that people are referring to. They're not referring to this dumb Gordon Ramsay thing. Being roasted it. by... Um, a Nobody's referring to this. Gordon Ramsay <sighs> while cooking a mandrake. Hold on. It's a good anime, guys. And a good manga. Oh anyway, God. I saved that there. Um... And it opened up the uh, uh, the folder preview, which showed thumbnails of images that I had in there. A lot of which were pornographic, most of which. Though there were some non-pornographic images, including Reagan Ripley from Inside... Yeah, he probably still jerks off to the fucking non-pornographic ones, too. He said something along the... ...job standing around in a bikini, I think. I don't know. Um, and non-pornographic canon images of Raru from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Which is funny, because there are far more pornographic images of Raru in there than there are non-pornographic images. But honestly, Raru just looks so good that even non-pornographic images feel pornographic to me. Yeah, an innately pornographic character design. <laughs> Why you keep your porn in the stream? It's to be sorted! I'm not arguing this Sorry, with you. I just looked again just to make sure. Yeah, that's there guys anymore okay yeah we get it the most potent roasting you know oh well why even say i don't want to argue with you guys about it okay because it's a to be sorted folder which had the taxes in it you know whatever also which need to be sorted i i, I don't get what's complicated about it anyway of the images that showed two of them were from the same artist two of them those from that artist that artist turned out to be a lolicon one of the two yeah, it just turned out to be couldn't have could have never guessed it images as far oh, unfortunately fuck, talking about this is always like a double-edged sword because i can't show to defend myself nor would i encourage you to go look it up because this is a lolicon artist so i don't like want to direct you to that you know but one of them one of the two images from this lolicon oh my god it's like she doesn't know what i'm doing oh this isn't her sorry who the fuck is this an artist, okay? To be clear, one of them flatly did sorry. not look like Lolicon. I'm sorry, you can say it's defensive. I think that's bullshit. I literally went back and looked. The chick is like six heads tall. She literally, like, it's like, apparently, the reason why people have said that is because it's a drawing of a, um, a VTuber. Uh, yeah, a VTuber that looks like a fucking kid. Yes, I remember the VTuber that he's referring to. Uh, and the VTuber is usually drawn as a lolly. But in that case, that's blaming me for a drawing that's not the drawing that was in there. So I don't, I just, I, I completely reject that line of logic. It just looked like a normal drawing. Because I went over my past video. Wow, well, he said it. He, he said it, so he must be telling the truth. The images were of Natsuro Matsuri a popular Japanese VTuber who Wow, that looks like a fucking child. That's crazy. ...is canonically 16 years old. The thing I found incredibly disgusting about her is that the creator behind this persona actually encourages her fans to make NSFW art of her underage VTuber rig. A so then why is Voss jerking off to it? A cursory glance of her Twitter shows that she actually has a hashtag in her bio where she encourages her fans to make this kind of art and it receives staggering amounts of likes and comments. Okay. I think it's beyond reprehensible and I'm mentioning this specifically because I haven't seen anyone do commentary on this or be outraged about the creator who is encouraging this so why don't you content to be created. So often <sighs> I feel in situations like this one, everyone is incredibly quick to get angry at the consumers, and rightfully so. But the most evil people are the producers and the distributors. Wow, so we're not allowed to call out the people consuming it. We can only call out the distributors. How convenient for Vosh. As they grease the wheels of an industry that at its core is built on the untold suffering of children. Yep, and they're manipulating these grown men like Vosh to jerk off to it. It's how fucking sad, man. That's so sad. I didn't know Vosh was a victim. Holy fuck, man. That's sad. All across the world. With all this said, <sighs> I believe Vosh when he said that all of this was a mistake. Because you're dumb. And, like, that's why they're, you're friends with Vosh. Because oh, people that are fucking stupid are not friends with or aren't stupid aren't friends with them. Like, people with, like, normal intelligence aren't friends with Vosh because he's just a creepy fucking weird guy. Like, every, like, uh, I don't know what you, what, 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 okay, yeah.
If you believe that this is a situation where no one could possibly make that- I'm surprised he doesn't vape on stream. He just seems like the type, you know? That mistake. You should also show that outrage to Ethan, but it's a cartoon Klein. <sighs> I just want to say, I thought she's hot. That's it. You didn't? She was like a lady. She's not a little girl. She's like a full-blown 17. Fuck. But it's a cartoon. It's a car- I Oh no, he's talking about some cartoon that apparently is 17 but probably looks like an adult versus some cartoon that says that they're 16 but looks like a fucking 8-year-old. You're right, Ethan uh, is a pedophile. You got him. On the topic of Ethan Klein, I want to address one of the criticisms he made, which is that I cynically weapon- There's a difference between looking at some- I don't even know who he's referencing. You obviously don't either. You didn't show us for a reason. There's a difference between him like looking at some fucking anime character and going, oh, that one's attractive, and then finding out that canonically it's 17, but it looks like an adult, versus somebody that has a downloaded image of like a 16-year-old canonical VTuber PNG that actually looks 8. Like, you know what I mean? Or 10. I don't know. I think there's a little bit of a difference. That's <laughs> what our thinking cap's on. Nice. Who is he talking about? My trans identity in this situation in order to manipulate people. Kepfels, what did you have to say? It shouldn't be acceptable for people who are supposedly leftist or progressive to pedo jacket trans people. First of all, uh -oh. first of all, Whoa. I didn't say anything about trans people. And the fact that you even brought that up in this conversation is really- Was it Cora from Avatar? <laughs> oh, let me see. Cora, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Um, I guess that one's not too bad. I guess, I don't know. I mean, they don't look super young. I guess that's somewhat ambiguous. A little weird. Definitely not Katara. That one's certainly very young. I guess she looks like an adult. Sure. Okay. Really fucked. Like, why are you, I feel like she's running, using. <laughs> don't stop the active shooters. Only the person that made the gun. Her trans identity to run defense for a very valid criticism. True that, brother. You got it. I didn't say shit about trans people, and I would never. That that's a position. That's a position that I loathe. How did trans people even get into the mix? From this, that was never, we never mentioned it. It's absolutely it was it's, never discussed it's, at all. You want to talk about bad faith arguments? I mean, give me a fucking give me a give freaking me, you know, break, bro. Give me a break. It shouldn't be acceptable for people who are. And what is the shit? Pedo jacketing. These people have the funniest, what? silliest, dumbest phrases yeah. for serious ass shit. Another word I've never heard. I didn't put on jacket. What, what, what's the jacket? Pedo jacket. Uh, we are already the target of that by the right. Incredibly disappointing to see from people who- Just to be clear, nobody except for terminally online people use the term pedo jacketing. Um, there are people on the right that try to label trans people as groomers, but nobody uses the term pedo jacketing. Pedo jacketing is more of a term that is not explicitly connected to trans people um, or trans defense. It's more connected to like the fact that there are people online who will sensationalize things and call people like, call me Carson a pedophile or a groomer or something. Or the second two mad passes away, call him a pedophile without any evidence and stuff like that. That's what that's what that term is really used for. It's for online people. Like trans people aren't using this. Keffels it does because she's a terminally online trans person. Um, so just to be that's intersectionality for you. Oh, she's twenty two by the end. Really, Cora's twenty two by the end of the show. Okay. Who should know better. And again, it's this whole thing like, yo, we're leftists, so can you please not talk about my infatuation with uh, Cartoon yeah. CP? First of all, I want to say that I don't believe... E all right, so I guess she's 17 in book one, 18 in book two, and book three, 21 in book four, and the comics. Oh, okay. She's Okay. Ethan Klein is transphobic. And years of insane harassment, which sometimes is bled into real-world stalking, has made me quite sensitive on this subject. I actually wow. agree with ContraPoints on principle. Making up false allegations of transphobia in order to weaponize your identity and silence your critics is incredibly harmful for trans people as a whole. So then why did you do that? Just as I believe making up false allegations of pedophilia against people is harmful, and, as Ethan Klein is already aware, has lasting consequences. Trans people are just as capable of doing bad things. I know. Trans people are just as capable of being pedophiles as cisgender people. That's why sure. I found one part of Ethan's coverage of Vosh particularly interesting. Well, Keem, I guess, had a situation where someone drew his daughter, and so this is personal to him. So I did not know that. Yeah. So, what Keem said, and I didn't know I this. I didn't know that. Somebody, an artist that I guess Vosh is friends with, drew CP of Keem's daughter. Disgusting. Shortly after this point in the stream, Ethan Klein was corrected. Okay, so just to clarify, there was an artist that drew some lolly that supposedly Chris uh, from Mr. Beast's crew shared that same artist, Drew Keem's daughter. And then after okay. finding out it was Chris from Mr. Beast who was friends with a Lolicon artist and not Vosh Tipster or I, he just simply stopped caring and dismissed it all. Oh, it's got nothing to do with Vosh or Tipster or anything? So this, it I, was all- I heard him say that they were friends. Yeah, yeah no, it, he kind of links it all Okay, together. whatever, we're yeah. talking the Keemstar- Yeah, I think Keemstar accidentally, or whatever, misrepresented it and said that, like, they were friends with this person. 
More text. Yeah. I don't- <laughs> this is more like the understanding, and I don't even remember all the specifics of the Christmas, uh, the Chris thing. Um, you would have to obviously look into it, and you wouldn't want to speak poorly about it. Right. From what I remember, and I could be wrong, is that they were like they had uh, some random picture of shades on their. I don't know. Like they printed it out and framed it. It was really weird. Um, it seemed like a really edgy joke or something. I don't remember the specifics. So when you don't remember the specifics, and that's not really what it's about, like you're not going to go into it. It makes sense for him not to stop the stream and decide to do like a half an hour of research on Chris from Mr. B, something that happened like years ago, um, when they're talking about Vosh's Lollicon porn folder being leaked like, in a, from the day before. <clears throat> but okay. I don't care about any of this. For those unaware, Chris Tyson from the Mr. Beast crew was a longtime fan of Shadman, an infamous Lollicon artist who made NSFW art of real <laughs> underage girls, including Keemstar's daughter. Shadman is an evil person, first and foremost, for making me feel bad for Keemstar, possibly for the first time in my life. Chris had not only purchased custom drawn Lolly art from Shadman, but proudly displayed it in her living room. Living room. An internet archive link still shows when in 2016, Chris tweeted, nothing gets my knob cranking like some lolly. But I guess Ethan approves of cranking your knob to lolly. I think it's more that he didn't know the specifics of it, so he's not going to speak on it. Uh, but yeah, that's bad if that's all true. Um, hopefully they're not actually into drawn kids. Uh, sure, bad stuff. Since he dismissed all of this and began praising Chris. I like Chris. He's a... Or, uh, sorry, she... Fuck, I'm sorry. She's a great person. Um, I've spoken with her, and I really like her. I've met her a few times. So I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't know what happened there. I haven't looked into it. But that's the problem. Yeah, I think that's fair. He just doesn't know about the specifics. And like, he can't sit there for an hour on stream digging all that stuff up while he does a different stream. Problem, isn't it? It's beneficial for you. I think pick, Chris Pick is pretty rough. Yeah, it seems it might be, you know. You can do attack Bosch. Bosch has a smaller platform and so do Tipster and I. We can't fight back. But if you were to have some- You could. Listen, in my career, and like, I'm, I'm chilling right now. But I've had multiple interactions against people that were a larger platform than me, and I've pretty much come out on top every time. I mean, the Death Noodles one is probably the best instance of that. You know, you'll win if you're actually correct or in the right. So, I mean, to, the Chris Tyson thing is like an okay point, but outside of that, it's just like, eh. Like, I wouldn't expect Ethan to stop everything he's doing to look into it and the specifics of it. Similar energy for Chris, who Mr. Beast depends vehemently. It would have it's also different. The Chris situation is not the same. Vosh wasn't like just caught with that. Like this is something like Vosh has a history of like really weird pedophile statements. <laughs> um, so plus the Lollicon that was in a two D disordered folder. I think it's a little bit different. You know what I mean? If it was, I don't know. Uh, but okay. It'd have consequences for him. The Mr. Beast channel is, after all, the second largest channel on the entire platform. By Ethan's logic, anyone who enjoys Lollicon wants to have sex with children. Next question. Simulate. That's Vosh's logic. That's what he says. Isn't that like what he says? Yeah, uh, child porn lolly, lolly stuff. I mean, uh, multiple I times throughout it, Ethan says like, yeah, it's not CP. They, they correct him. They're like, he's like, I think it's drawn CP, but it's not really CP. Like they are pretty contextually accurate about it. So, okay. I think it's pretty sussy. Good. I think that if you have an interest in that sort of stuff, you should definitely be checking yourself as to why. You know, like, uh, the, the oh. thing that really bothers me about this shit, apart from the fact that anytime you want to look at, like, hentai on a hentai site, you have to, like, negate the tag lolly and thus 50% of the site's content. The thing that bothers me is people who pretend there's no relationship whatsoever between, like, drawn lolly shit and actual attraction to children. Because, of course, there's a relationship between those things. It's ridiculous to pretend okay. otherwise. Okay. Take it from me. Okay. okay. That's the end. Okay. All right, how is this a slam dunk on Ethan? <laughs> That's it. I mean, he basically, he's right. That's Therefore, right. <laughs> he just did like a um, transitive property. Therefore, I want to fuck kids. Like, it's pretty, it's like a clean equation. Yep. <laughs> he says, I watch Lolly, and people who watch Lolly want to fuck kids. Chris enjoys Lolly. Yeah, that's wrong. Uh, that, the Chris thing is definitely bad. Um, hopefully, Chris doesn't also have a history of constantly <laughs> having some kind of really uncomfortable pro CP takes. Lolly Kong. She's arguably one of the largest trans public figures in the world. Host to a channel. Equation. Yep. Let me see whole thing. He says, I watch Lolly. And people. It's December 16th, 2016. That's eight years ago. Just to be clear. Okay. I just want to be very clear. Right. Because I'm not trying to sit here and defend Chris. So this is from Dece December 16th. So we're talking about uh, eight years ago. So Chris would have been 19. Still gross. Versus Vosh having it in his folder at 29. I'm just saying, I feel like there's at least a little bit of a difference. Uh, yeah, okay. People were obnoxiously and annoyingly edgy back in 2016. I think it's bad. Obviously gross. I'm just saying, I feel like it's a little different. You know, we're in 2024 now. <laughs> but okay. People who watch Lolly want to fuck kids. Chris enjoys Lollicon. 
She's arguably one of the largest trans public figures <clears throat> in the world, host to a channel that is beloved by millions of children. Where is this energy for protecting kids, Ethan? Or do you not care about children? and only care about attacking low-hanging fruit that can't fight back. I find this selective moral outrage to be okay. rather telling. It either points to the fact that you don't care about child abuse, or that you only care about it when you can use it to feather and tar people you don't like. When you can eat- uh, But he- but there's nothing suggesting he doesn't like Vosh. Like, the beginning of his stream was, like, very good faith towards Vosh, and then it kind of just started spiraling because the stuff was gross. Easily point to someone you don't like as a pedophile, you take the first opportunity. But I think they even say a few times like they don't think he's a pedophile, but it's definitely weird shit. When you see it around- And Vosh said it was weird, so I feel like, what's going on here? ...around you, and it feels too com- I think there might have been more context to the one with Chris. If I remember right, she was responding to some actual Lolly fan and being sarcastic with them, and people took it out of context. Oh! Is that true? That actually, that might be true. I don't remember the specifics. Um, that would make sense because it seemed a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> but maybe that might be what it is. All right, guys, let's go. Is that the context here? I have a video talking all about it. Uh, oh, look, it's a video reacting to Jalen. This might be the video. Um, like, ex yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just link this in the description so you can take a quick look at it. But yeah, but stuff might be out of context. Maybe you're right. <clears throat> Chris Tyson. Maybe. Or should we just watch this really, really fast? Got exposed, yeah. and recently some old concerning tweets have resurfaced. As you guys know, recently Chris Tyson. Came blah, 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 blah. The rise and fall of blah, blah, blah. Saying, like Chris. Blah, 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 blah. What happened? Chris to cancel Chris. I mean, people have known about these tweets for years, and, and I'm pretty sure these same exact people wouldn't have cared if Chris wasn't trans. How he enjoys looking at Lolly, or this one where he says a four-year-old is attractive, and this one where he says he, he bought this weird-looking Lolly art from a Lolly artist known as Shadman. Now, I can already come out and sort of debunk a couple of these tweets. That first tweet was actually Chris responding to a LollyCon, and it looks like they were fighting. I'll, I'll just play this clip for my friend Natty of, of them explaining it. Because oh, the shit, Natty's a good person. Original reply thread. Right now, there are posts on Twitter bringing up some old posts regarding Chris, saying something along the lines of, nothing gets my nut pranking like some Lolly, which is another way of saying drawings of young children that it's I really yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was actually replying to somebody, and that account's not suspended. And these two were arguing for a while, and both of the accounts that Chris was responding to are now suspended. So what seems to happen here is that basically Chris was responding to somebody that was a LollyCon calling them out on this, and this post was actually a post mocking them. Oh, okay. Sure, that makes sense. So I guess that one was mocking them. It is or why exactly? Um, blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah. So it seems to have some explanation of it. This is this one where Chris states that he bought this 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 weird inappropriate image from Shadman. Listen, I'm real charitable and stuff, but having a Shadman drawing in your living room is far beyond what I would consider to be normal. And that's true. Just to like explain who Shadman is, I'll go over this uh, this thread by Nicholas Diorio. From 2016 to 2018, there was a really awkward time on the internet where edgy commentary channels and right wing skeptics defended the predator Shadman's right to create depictions of inappropriate minors as a free speech issue. Shadman was best known for creating an inappropriate drawing of Keemstar's at the time seven year old daughter, a similar drawing of LT Corbis, and got his website taken down for making NSFW art of Daphne Keen, the 14 year old actress from Logan. Many creators continue to work with slash support him for years. These days, that is becoming increasingly more rare, thankfully. But yeah, I figured I would drop some more. As more people are discovering Chris Tyson owned a piece Shadman made. And this is a video from Turkey Tom. If you guys want to learn more about Shadman, you can go watch that. So, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely really weird that Chris supported this guy and, and bought one of his drawings. I'm not going to say that this means Chris is like a weirdo or, or a creep. I've seen like some conservatives making videos saying, this is why Chris... Yeah, okay, there you go. I'll just put my full thing in there. So, uh, just to be clear, it sounds like the tweet itself was actually Chris mocking somebody. Um, that's a lolly con. And then the other one is like gross. It's unexplainable. I guess it's because 2016 people were edgy and thought it was fucking based or something. I guess that's your best defense. Um, okay. Um, at least they don't have it in their to be sorted porn folder at 29 years old. <laughs> Complicated to call out because there might be okay. ramifications for you. You're silent. For Ethan, oh, he's falsely accusing Tony Winchester oh of being God, a pedophile. Tony, I'll Tony uh, can you come back from the dead and ask us if you're okay with this? Your name constantly being used? Like, this is your legacy? Is this something that makes you happy? Hey guys. Alongside what happened to YouTuber Etika, convinced Cheap Fuel to drop Keemstar as a sponsor. Yet in this situation, Ethan Klein is more than comfortable calling me tipster and anyone- Nobody called you a pedophile. Nobody called tipster a pedophile. New challenges his narrative. I don't even really- I wouldn't even say that they necessarily called Vosh one. They just said he was gross for it. And they showed him saying that you must be have some kind of an issue if you're consuming it. A pedophile without a second thought. On the topic of selective okay. moral outrage, let's go back to talking about our favorite transgender video essayist for a second, Natalie Wynn. What Natalie is doing here to teach all the people in my audience who aren't trans a new word is being a pick-me. And it's far from the first time she 
he's done this. A pick me is a term used in the trans community to denote someone who- It's a term used in any community. It's it's just weird to me because the pedo jacketing thing and the pick me thing, these aren't exclusively the trans community. And the way that you talk about it makes it seem like it is. But these are these are words that terminally online people use for the most part. Um, and then they, and like you got, you've got you co-opted it, which is fine. Like you could use, you could call her like a trans pick me if you want. I don't know her. I, I, I'm skeptical of your coverage of anything. But- like, I don't know. It's, just a, it's a weird complaint, I guess, for me. Who acts as a token trans person in okay. order to validate the opinions of cisgender people and to wow, give them an air stuff. of progressiveness. This term is usually reserved for trans people like Blair White, who serve <sighs> to validate the conservative worldview of trans people. Although ContraPoints often posits herself as far more radical than she is, she's basically the inverse of Blair White. She is the democratic wing of the popular trans YouTubers. If ContraPoints is truly consistent in her position that people who hurt children and those who defend them shouldn't have a platform, she shouldn't have allowed herself to be used as a public relations win by Hillary Clinton, who just this year was named on the Epstein list. It has long been known her pedo husband, Bill, was friends with Jeffrey Epstein, Okay. With his name appearing on the flight logs of the Lolita Express and eyewitness testimony. Listen, maybe he was talking kids on that island, or maybe I don't think that island was just kids. My understanding was there's some good looking at dwarves fucking each other and stuff. I think, you know, it's still gross. I'm just saying. <laughs> confirming he had in fact visited Epstein Island on more than one occasion. And despite this, Natalie Wynn allowed Clinton to use her status as a popular trans YouTuber to launder her reputation. Okay. Natalie doesn't care about children. She cares about getting her dunks in and being vindictive to people she doesn't like. If you don't know her- I mean, didn't you have like a whole website that dedicated to try to getting people that weren't diagnosed with gender dysphoria, like Medicaid or like hormones, even if it wasn't verified that they were like trans? Don't you think that hurts kids? I mean, I'm all, f listen, you know, I'm not against, uh, you know, uh, young trans people getting gender affirming care that's appropriate for them. I'm just saying that they need to be diagnosed and have like a doctor facilitate this. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but okay. Who Jeffrey Epstein is? I would recommend checking out Jay Aubrey's most recent video, The Jeffrey Epstein <sighs> Saga, A Network of Depravity, Part what? 1. The more I've learned about Jeff what about part two? Jeffrey Epstein and everything that has gone on with him, the less it's faith crazy. I have in humanity as a whole. One last thing to address here. Ethan, I know you made fun of the comparison of child slave labor to the production of child pornography. I don't think he made fun of it. I think he said that those things are very different because you can make computers and chocolate without hurting children, but you can't make child porn without hurting children. So it's not a good one-to-one -one comparison at all. So we have this one here. H3H3 H3 posting. A and then he was making memes. According to Vosh, you decide no oh CP and no cobalt versus CP and cobalt. Now, if you don't know what this is in reference to, this is a reference to a debate that Vosh was having. <laughs> it's just Ethan shit posting memes on Instagram. Having where he was like talking about how bad. Dude, listen, I'm not, I'm really not trying to be like an asshole. I don't think I this he's a bad guy, but this guy literally last year was defending a fucking picture of a seven year old drawn cartoon fucking girl saying that it wasn't Lollicon and saying that it was fucking um, Kawaii. What the fuck is the term? Whatever the Japanese word for cute. And it's like, this is not the guy you really want in your corner for this. I don't think that he actually likes this kind of stuff. I think that he was defending a friend too hard, which he seems to do a lot. But I mean, like, it's not, not exactly a good look, man. So why is this like your, your big, your smoking gun? Whatever you call it. It doesn't really see... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really help. And I think his best defense against it was, guys, it's not a seven-year-old drawn girl. It was a seven-year-old drawn boy. It's like, come on, man. Like, this is, I just, I would have stayed out of it. I would have stayed out of it. You know, I would have stayed out of this one. Uh, you know, things like child slavery. Oh, it's Hawaii. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, child slavery art, child slave labor. There's a lot of industries that we get products from where they are the product of child slave labor. Hold on a second. Kauai. 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 This? Let's listen. This? Let's listen. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> Hawaii. Hawaii. Unfortunately. And you know, a lot of you guys are buying these products not realizing that I'm gonna forget that. this is the case, right? You have yeah, well, you know, tips for last time I bought child porn, I knew it was harming a child. Okay. Uh, that probably isn't a good one to use. That's probably not a good joke to use. My point is, is that nobody's really buying computers thinking about the oppression that's going on there. Nobody also knows the specifics of whatever child labor is going on in these other countries. You could, like, I'm, I don't know. 
Um, I don't think it's the same one to one. So, you know, what do we do? We just make them in our own country and then they don't get jobs at all, I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's, I don't, I don't really know the specifics of how it's working over there. Terrible stuff. America should just march through the world and take over every country and then there'll be no problems, guys. Don't worry about that. Don't even worry about it. Have products like, you know, cell phones, you know, iPhones and stuff like that that have. So then why are you have one, dude? Get rid of it. If you think it's just as bad as CP. The fuck? Cobalt mined in them uh, that was mined off the backs of slave labor. Okay? You have such <sighs> Based. situations like... Uh, I only care about American kids, just so you know. I don't care about <laughs> American slaves. Okay? I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> just kidding. That's terrible. Uh, you know, maybe you buy chocolate. Maybe you're a big fan of chocolate. Yeah, and there are I'm not. I'm actually a big fan of meatloaf. Various different oh, companies geez. that use slave labor to, you know, harvest the cocoa beans used to make the chocolate, etc. I can give you several examples of where this is the case. And so Vosh was using an analogy to kind of point out that there's a little bit of inconsistency here in terms of, like, people are okay with this type. That's not what he was doing, and dude. And Dizzle shatted $4.99. Recently discovered you. Thanks, bro. Uh, content that. is refreshing. Thank you. Thanks for the good takes, Papa. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. I really do. Again, that's not really what he's doing. That's like the general argument, if I'm being charitable. But he's trying to wrap it in a provocative nature for fucking attention from Twitter. I don't know what you want me to tell you. You know? That's your best argument, is that most of these takes are fucking insane because he wanted Twitter attention five years ago when it was, like, acceptable to do weird shit like this. That's your best argument abuse but they're not okay with this type of child abuse but i think the reason why this hits yes, such a yes, nerve yes, is yes, actually yes, something yes. much deeper relating to petty fresh ah uh, yes because they use child slave luxury clothing brand owned by kids yearn for the mines bro i don't know what you're talking about that uses your platform as Ela. a vehicle for selling merchandise oh, if you go to the ethics and sustainability section of their website oh, it says Lord. at teddy fresh it is essential that all our production partners pass stringent audits to ensure our facilities are abiding by and surpassing the global standards for ethical labor practices Oh, that sounds like a good thing. These third-party auditors include RAP, Smeta, and Amfor- Schmegma! BSCI, who certify there is no child labor or unfair labor practices. No or at least they're above the, uh, the above the, uh, the fucking global standard. On the surface, it seems fine, but- Yeah, it seems good on the surface. Let's take a deeper look, because nothing is as it seems. RAP oh, stands God. for Worldwide Responsible Accredited <sighs> Production, an organization based in Arlington, Virginia, whose stated yeah. aim is promoting safe, lawful, humane, and ethical manufacturing around the world. Cool. However, their work has been described by commentators as undermining local- What, who's commentators? Labor rights organizations, with some organizations in the early 2000s that advocated against sweatshops, describing rap as an industry-driven effort to avoid scrutiny. Sorry, let me just want to read that myself. It has been described by commentators, I don't know who the commentators are, as undermining that of local labor rights organizations in the global south in the early 2000s. Some organizations advocating against sweatshops describe rap as an industry-driven effort to avoid scrutiny. Okay, so it sounds like the rap uh, exists so that companies can latch themselves onto it and go, look, we are doing better than the industry standard or something. Okay, how does that make Ethan and Ela bad? They're trying to do what they feel is right, which is to engage with um, organizations, three of them, I guess, that generally advocate for not utilizing um, abhorrent practices when getting their materials. They try to do the best or do better above the global standard. Um, so, cool. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know, Planned Parenthood used to fucking be racist. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? This shit happens in the past, I guess. I don't know. Thousands of advocates. <laughs> what do you want them to do? Create their own... A uh, verification company for this? I don't... ...against sweatshops, describing rap as an industry-driven effort to avoid scrutiny. A report okay. by the Toronto-based Michaela Solidarity Network showed that rap's board is dominated by industry representatives. Oh, God. has no provision them. for public disclosure of any problems found in factories, or even where factories are located. Oh, no. has a labor code similar to anti-union right-to-work legislation in some U.S. states, and only encourages manufacturers to apply self-imposed environment... Okay, so this is a report from 25, four years ago. Just gonna be honest with you, that's a little bit old. You have an more updated report? Environmentally conscious practices. Looking into this further, an article in The Nation written by Alex Dubro on April 7th. Do you have anything else on the other two organizations that they're working with, or just this one that you can harp on? 17, 2001 talks about the vice chairman of rap, Otto Reich. Unfortunate last name I, I thought the vice chairman of rap would have been a black guy, you know? No, and how rap was a clothing industry front founded to undermine the growing anti sweatshop movement. A cursory glance into another one of their auditors, Amphory BSCI, shows gotcha. that they also have their share of controversy. In an article in 
untitled bribes, fake factories, and forged documents of buccaneering consultants pervading China's factory audits by the South China Morning Post. They discuss how Chinese factories often bribe inspectors to gain accreditation for the industry platform and for EBSCI. With some well, that's not Darky good. Factories Ethan, super you gotta go to China and start attacking I hope these people. one day you and CM Punk do a collab. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um... <laughs> going as far as to forge fake identity documents for their child workers. Yeah. The article goes on to discuss... So my question is, do you think it would be better if Ethan worked with none of them or with some of them? I feel like this is like a super reach. These have controversial past. They might not be perfect, and that's not good. But you have this massive expectation for Ethan, even though he's working with apparently three of these, um, you know, whatever accreditations or whatever you want to call them, uh, to try to make sure that his... Uh, materials for his shirts and whatever or his clothing are not sourced in a bad way i don't think it's that big i think i okay cool in depth the level of corruption that is taking place a database of more than 5,000 audits conducted in china last year shown to the post by an industry whistleblower showed that more than 90 percent of factories audited by third-party auditors for the am bsci platforms were not transparent in their documentation and have falsified records china bad dude keeping for worker pay working hours and overtime suggesting they pose a greater risk of cheating on inspections. Ambury BSCI did not respond to repeated requests for comment. With all this said, this isn't definitive proof that Teddy- There's, You missed the third one, but- Fresh is made with child labor, but the evidence suggests that the likelihood of this being true is high. And if it- No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It suggests that two of the three accreditations that they use um, have a sketchy pass, one of which is a report you're referencing from 24 years ago. <laughs> I know the year 2000 feels like it was yesterday because, you know, I'm old, but that's... And the other one, like, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it that China's fucking around with shit. And maybe there's an issue, but they're doing more than most, I would argue, to try to make sure that these things are done the right way. <clears throat> it is. Arguments which attempt to make people just as disgusted with child sexual exploitation as they are with child sweatshop labor would definitely be honestly i think that a child's children being raped is probably worse than them working in a sweatshop just being honest with you okay you know i say we should give these sweatshops air conditioners because then they wouldn't be they would just be regular they'd be can, they would be sweating more no more sweat uh yeah i just i think that uh listen i don't think it's good but i also think it's not i got has anybody considered that like kids working in sweatshops they're probably not as abused as kids being uh, assaulted <laughs> I don't know. If I was a kid, I'd rather work a sweatshop. I'm not saying it's good. All I'm saying is like something to think about. It's just a thought. It's just something to think about. Bad for his brand. They're both really bad. Maybe. I mean, I worked when I was 12. I don't really, I don't know how the conditions are what I have an issue with. They're probably not great. I'm just saying. In his business. This could explain his hyperfixation on this specific comparison. I don't think there's any point in comparing him. That's fair. That's actually probably the, the <laughs> that's probably the best uh, take you got there, buddy. I appreciate that. That's a good one. Although this may be giving him too much credit for having thought all of this. They're assaulted in the sweatshops. Holy fuck. How do you know, dude? What do you work there? You fucking animal. What the hell are you saying? True. Anyway, love you both. <laughs> Stop being hypocrites. This video wouldn't be possible without Alexa. And this video is fucking dog shit, just to be clear with you. That's fucking horrible. Soul of Cinder. Subscribe today at Patreon. The only good thing is that we don't have to see your face, I guess. Uh, so. Patreon.com slash Kepler. I'm just kidding, that's mean. Because this video is more than likely going to be demonetized, considering how many times I said pedophile in the last half hour. Why not just censor it then? Okay, great. Cool. Very ka kawaii. 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 Very kawaii. Is there anything else? Um... Very kawaii. Very kawaii. Okay, cool. 